Things you must do first, reference planes. What are reference planes? Why do we use them and how do we use them? We're going to spend the next few minutes answering those questions. So far, we've identified the project base point. This is found under the site view in floor plans in the project browser. We have clicked on the project base point and rotated to the true north. We've assigned it a location on Earth. So those are some of the things that we've done so far. But notice if I go into level one, where's the project base point? We do have some of these sample walls that I was drawing, but really we don't know where it is in the context of this view. And if I go to level two, same thing, we can't see it there. So let's go back to the site plan and I'm gonna go into the properties of this view. So I click in some white space, go into the properties palette, and then I'm gonna just scroll down here. Let's look for this orientation. Right there, orientation, true north. Let's set that to project north. Now, these walls I just drew as a sample. These have nothing to do with the little project that we're working on, the kitchen edition. So I'm going to just erase those. And in their place, I'm going to draw some reference planes. So reference planes are found under the home tab in the ribbon, found under work plane, and then ref plane. You can also type in RP in order to access them. It's a fast way of doing it. I'm going to click on reference plane and I'm simply going to click right in the center of that project base point and draw something there. And I'm going to click to the right this time and then draw right into the project base point. And it's giving me alignment lines as you can see so I can draw properly. Now I'm just hitting the escape key to get out of the command and we'll hit on this as we go. The escape key is how to cancel out of a command that you're working in. Let's see what we've done with these reference planes in our project browser. So let me go to floor plans, level one and double click there. So now we have an idea of where we want to start. Reference planes can also be named. If I click on a reference plane, it has properties. So if I click on name, I could call this one left side, and this can be changed later. I could call this one top. And again, we're going to discuss why am I drawing them here and where are we going to orient the building. It really comes down to the sketch now from the client, and I'm just going to be picking a point off that sketch and saying this is zero, and that's really where this intersection point will be right here. So let's flip back over to the client sketch. So we can see that they've dimensioned to the inside. So that's really what's in their mind. Their expectations are really centered around how it's going to look and feel inside. And that's reflected in the way they sketched this. So we're going to draw based upon that. They did the dimensions. And of course, we may want to go on site and confirm that. But for now, let's go based upon what they have. So if you take a look here, we've got a 10 feet, 17 feet, and other dimensions that are showing key features. I'm going to choose this point right here as my main point, my zero. It's going to be my zero, zero, my origin. So let's go back into Revit and let's establish the 17 feet across and then the 10 feet down. Okay, so we're back into Revit and we're working with reference planes. I'm going to click on reference plane again. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to offset 17 feet. So I highlight that, type in 17 feet, and Revit will know that when I draw along this line, it's automatically going to offset that by 17 feet. You can see it's away from my cursor. It's 17 feet away from my cursor to the right. If you want to flip that, you hit the spacebar. And I can hit spacebar again. We will be using spacebar and escape extensively throughout this course. When I get my point, I click. I will hit escape twice. It takes me out of the command. Now, if we clicked on this reference plane and called it left, then we could click on this reference plane and call it right. Now, we were also going to draw 10 feet down. So let me click on reference plane. And I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to highlight this offset, type 10 feet. I'm going to draw starting from the right, going to the left, 
and then click. Hit escape twice, we're back to our main cursor. This point right here is an intersection. The intersection is the project origin. So what I'm going to do is extend this left reference plane. Now how am I doing that? I'm clicking, then there's some grips that come up. I can then click and hold down on that grip and then just drag it and then let go of my left mouse button and that's where it goes to. I can do the same with these. It's still leaving that intersection as the key point. So now we've drawn the basic extents of our building. What are some other good things that we can do? Well, it's probably a good idea in order to draw a center line for our building. And sometimes that helps if you're mirroring things or you're trying to take dimensions. It can help to have sort of a preset center line to establish the center of your building. So let's do that. I'm going to go to Reference Plane again. Now, what is the center between these two lines? Well, the total distance is 17 feet. So if we were to put in 8 foot 6, that would be exactly center. And I'm going to draw from the left, just about there, down, click. So it's two clicks, one at the top, one at the bottom. And it automatically draws a reference plane right down the center. I'm going to hit Escape twice. That'll take me out of the command again. And we can go the other way if that's something that we want to do. So let's do that. This one is a little bit even an easier number. If I just highlight the offset bar and type 5 feet, now I can click on any one of these lines, either the top reference plane or the bottom. But if I click on the top one on the far right and draw it to the left, hit escape twice, now we have our centers as well. And that's something that we can name them. So we can call this one center. Depending on where you are, your spelling might vary a little bit. So I'm going to say center. And we could call that dividing east and west. This one here, we could call center dividing north, south. And again, sometimes these things, they're up to you. We might just call it center up, center vertical, center horizontal. That's something that you can choose. Now, what more can we do with these reference planes as we go? Well, let's flip back to that sketch and establish some key points in our building. Well, here's a key one I can see, a post. So let's go 7 foot 10 and a half. Let's go back to Revit and enter that in as a reference plane. Can I go to offset, 7 foot 10. Now, how do I say and a half? Well, there's a couple ways. I could just type in 0.5, or I could do a space and then 1 slash 2, and it'll pick that up as 7 foot 10 and a half. So if I zoom in and I just click here and here, oh no, it's on the wrong side. What do I do? Space bar. That'll flip it. Good. Hit escape twice. Click on the reference plane, and let's name that center post. So we've laid out some important key features with reference planes, and we will be using them more as we go on in the course. So remember a few things about them. They're for main building elements, main building dimensions. And let's add one more detail to these. Once you draw them, yes, you can click on them and move them. What if we don't want to move them? We want to keep them in the same place. Well, that's where we could use the pin tool. So I'm going to select all of those reference planes. I'm going to go up to my Modify Reference Planes tab, which is made in the ribbon. And I'm going to look through here for a pin. And if you look under Modify, there's a pin right there. I'm just going to click Pin. Now those are set. So if I go to level two, you can see the same reference planes. If I click on a reference plane and drag it, it doesn't move, but you can see it. And that's still the top. That's still named the right and so on. What if I were to go to another view, which is a little bit more abstract, like an elevation view? I'm just going to double click in the project browser on south. What are these reference planes? Those are the ones that we drew. How do we know which one is which? 
Well, I'm going to roll my mouse forward, roll the scroll wheel forward to zoom in, and I'm going to hover over this right one. So that's reference plane right. This one here, center of post. This one here, center east west. So reference planes can be seen in multiple views, and if you pin them, they can't easily be moved. So this is one of the key fundamental concepts of Revit, and you will use this extensively throughout your Revit use.